Kirby, do you like donuts? I do. But recently I've been wondering if uh, if I'm getting a little bit too fat. So I don't know if I should still eat donuts, but I do really like donuts. Good ones. Juicy, sweet, special ones. Not dry ones from the supermarket, obviously. We don't really have good donuts that much in the Netherlands, or at least not at the bakers that I frequent. But give me some Dunkin' Donuts in the United States of America, and I'm game. What race am I playing, I guess? Kirby, you're so fat. I know, I know. Did you know that my name means fat in Polish? Night Elf? Okay, thank you. <laughs> Sounds like the life, please, man. Thanks for the reset. Katie, thank you for the sub. Welcome to the club. Have a 30 CM sub. I have a problem though, but because anytime I'm at the uh, subway sandwich, I cannot order half, half a foot. I always go for the foot, even if I'm not hungry. I don't know why. Any reason why you don't like head hitters? I love head hitters. But I like winning more. Yeah, they do it on purpose, I think. The value of the six... Uh, of the six inch is uh, too low. You look at the price and you're like, I've done a little bit of maths in my day and I do believe that I get better value if I get the whole set. Oh, there you go. Yes, oh. I do it on purpose. I like value. Might be, to knock. Might be. Oops. I misclicked on this demon hunter. Ay, 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 ay. I'll have a free creep. It's Christmas. Why not killing Wisp? It's not worth it. Wisp travel speed is the same as a hero, so you cannot chase it down. And then uh, right here, you cannot reach it. So he will just lead you by the nose, and uh, you'll waste time. It's just not worth it. Not level 2. Yeah, and if you were to somehow get it, he will detonate, you lose your mana. Quite right. Technically, these bash guys should not be attacking your blade, because bash on blade is the most DPS reduction. And then you'll creep at the slowest. He's doing the uh, red camp now. There was no way, there was no reason for him to TP out at this particular time. Yes, 
I remember that Bash guy created some problems at WCG. It wasn't WCG, it was Warcraft World War in 2006 in Korea. WCG was where Fly 5 minute wind against TH. On this map. And then. No, Infi, Infi, not TH. Yeah, he got the greater mana potion. Well, let's let's fight. He feels pretty good because my tech is late and because life is beautiful, but uh, he doesn't know he's losing because I have an expansion. <laughs> Is he losing though? Hmm, good question. Yes, is he? Yeah, he is. Freaking used invis? You bastard! I was wondering how he got the the thing without me seeing the thing. He got the invo even though he was barely over here. Now to dry my tears, I need to. Uh, Get a level four blade master. It's gonna be really hard. No TC level, but instead super high level blade. Oh. I am yours. 
Oh, my grunts are gone before I even got to upgrade Berserker Strength. Pretty high level Beastmaster. Clubber is just to help with um, hero damage. Poor Blade Master fight. Because TC died. It was a fire fight. Free coaching for my opponent. Coming up. It's just for him, so try not to learn anything from it yourself, okay? Ready to work. Ready to work. Ready to work. Ready to work. 
Your building is Okay, first of all, good base layout by him. Standard meta opening and standard meta opening by me for the most part, except my meta is old because I go double burrow. Standard is one burrow for orc by now. He opens up, he puts wisps in some cool locations, cheat location, cheat location, and here's another. Uh, here's one, this one is fake, B bit mistake. The shop is... Oh, okay. So the shop for him is to go to 21 food without having the moon well finished, which uh, is always something I struggle with. This allows him to have just the right amount of wisps without needing to wait for the moon well to finish. That means once the moon well finish, uh, you'll see that roughly 180 lumber will be reached. See? Normally he would start it right now. But he's almost there at 180 lumber. So I'm going to copy his trick. That's pretty smart. It's just like Zerg extractor trick. He ends up stealing one of my forest troll trappers. Which in theory is not possible. Because I have windwalk. So I have like 70 damage burst. So it's not possible for him to steal. But I misclicked on his blade. He did right. He stole it. Good job. So he attacks nice and quick. Archer scouts for the marketplace. Which is normal. He brings his agent of war back to complete the wall off which is also standard and he builds double moon wells which also is uh, really good i think better than three moon well four is better you get that moon well juice really early and then he ends up scouting me he sees where i am and he leaves presumably to get circlet dust no boots and dust but he went a little bit too early so he should sharpen his timing a bit the second thing he should be doing when he gets staff of telly always check out the orc base with a staff uh with a wisp just to see if there's anything worth staffing towards the third thing i would say he did wrong was when he left me he made it so obvious that he was marketplace creeping that it gave me a level of confidence your building, your building is because look technically it's a creep jack you can be as annoying as you want with boots but he just left he should be continuing to contest, 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 bring my grunts as low as possible, I take more damage. And also when you staff of Telly, the direction a hero is facing is where they're going to. Had he gone to his main base, he would have looked this way. But he's looking this way, so you know he's going to the marketplace. So I knew he's creeping that and that gave me confidence that I could do whatever I want on the map. So. Everything he did was textbook except his decision making. So I get to clear this for free, which should have been kind of awkward. And he loses critical information about what I'm doing next. Now this strategy I'm doing is an Orc versus Knight of special from Fly 100%. I've, saw, I've seen it like nine years ago. And although you still tech to tier two, you still have three burrows. All the timings are normal. It only starts to diverge when you go for this mercenary camp. He clearly did not know the strategy or he would have stayed. But if he had known it, it would be advisable for him to stick around. Also, anytime you leave with your hero and you're not near the orc, do get an idea of what he's doing with some wisps. His shop is late. The shop should be made when Tree of Life is halfway done. Exactly halfway done. The reason it's late is because his APM is too low or his multitasking. You should be doing this while harassing, but he was clearly too occupied. So normally when you make it halfway tree, you can build staff of preservation right when it finishes, but now he cannot. I end up creeping this, which he didn't know, and expand, which uh, does cost money. As you can see, instead of 600 gold, I have 300 by the time tier two finishes. Um, so I cannot immediately make TC and double tech. He reaches my base. He sees I'm tier 2 but no buildings. There is no situation where a good orc will not make tier 2 buildings immediately upon finishing tier 2. Except if they made a hidden expenditure. Which I didn't. But he should assume something is fishy. Instead he played it normally. 
And that's because he thought maybe I just finished. Maybe I didn't want to make it yet because he was coming. But like there's no way that it's okay for Orc to play a normal game with four grunts and then not rush out their tech. I should be having double tech and defending my base. The reason that I'm not is because I was doing sneaky things, which he did not think about. I end up just trading for damage. I do end up trying to do surrounds, but actually surrounds were not necessary. Just do as much damage as you can, kind of auto attack. Don't do anything too fancy. And when you surround, he's gonna do evasive maneuvers and he will try to leave and maybe he will find your expo. But if you just auto attack, like you're a dumb orc with no IQ, you cannot surround, you're just like, oh, let's just hit. He's gonna be like, eh, look at me, I can dodge your abilities and I can dodge your surrounds and I can stay because you're not really threatening me and it's gonna actually make them more encouraged to stay around which is better because it means he doesn't find the expansion i even here i do a surround because i saw an opportunity but i didn't keep it up so like i said at this point he feels good about the game because uh, he just killed a troll for free and he's going to tier three his timings of tech is really good. He gets staff of teleport, preservation. Again, classical good meta. He finishes the camp. I do a kind of like defensive maneuvers with my hero. I get heal scroll. He arrives right after it in this, stays around and ends up attacking my TC. My slow reaction causes me to die, which is another thing that makes him feel really good about the game and about how it's going. And in a normal game, he should be winning based on what happened so far. But what he didn't know is that I have the expansion. So when you have the expansion, you get a lot of bonus money, as you can see. So first of all, as an orc, you want to buy as much as you can. All the scrolls, all the invuls, anytime you can. Secondly, you need to build a big surplus of supply. So that when you want to go over 50 food, you can do so in a grand fashion. Also, when you have an expansion and the opponent doesn't, you shouldn't overvalue the amount of gold that you have or that you could earn because you're already mining exactly 200% of him. Mining 140% of what he earns is still completely fine. And that's what would happen if I were to go over 50 food now. So 200% is greedy, 140 is more than enough because the way that I would lose is if I produce too late. He gets a nice value camp, gets to level three and two. Here, he should have removed his Demon Hunter maybe, so that he can get Beastmaster level 3. It's not that a high level Demon isn't good, it's just that he's closer to the next power threshold of the Beastmaster. And he should have played for value in the right here right now, not in the future. Putting a Wisp here immediately after you expand, after you creep it, is recommended. Just so that you have the option of expanding if it becomes necessary. It will cut down on the travel time. Another Wisp location would be the Mercenary Camp. Do take a Wisp from the base, put it at the Mercenary Camp so that you can hire anything you like, again, if it becomes necessary. This looks really good for him. My army is tiny, so he should be fairly confident that he's going to be winning the game, if not for one little fact. I went over 50 food, I would say slightly too late, but still okay. Uh, I made a war mill because I lack peons, I lack lumber, and I have a lot of gold. War mill only costs gold, no lumber, so it's better to make a war mill so that you can increase your lumber mining. It's like trade. I run away, buy time, heal solve, gonna get some mercs. At this point he sees I have an expansion. He did not click the gold mine, he doesn't know how long I've had it, but it cannot be long. It's still good for him because he's demon 3 against TC1. So this is his best chance of winning, but I do have 20 food more than him. So the longer it goes on, the better for me. Uh, I'm a little bit in disarray. My hurt units are at the front, my healthy in the back. I buy a troll shadow priest, but I don't really use it properly. So this is the best situation for him possible. The big boon for me is a high level blade and having both of the heal scrolls, which he doesn't have. So we fight. Okay, now my micro is going to be a snare spring. demon. Run away from it. It's an orc, baby. Thanks for the nine months reset, Nachmux. Everything just send it to attack move, group one, which is my grants and blades and TC. Three is walkers, attack move. And then you get your two, which is your raiders. 
you ensnare a demon and then you run away from demon and you click a talent. That's the basic micro. If you see this, I will subscri subscribe. Thanks, Loop Monkey. So you ensnare a demon and get away. As for his part, Cycloning Hero and a unit here and there is good. He should be using his talents to kill both of these grunts fast because it's a value play. His Beastmaster is close to leveling up to three. And the sooner he kills these grunts, the sooner he unlocks that uh, Quill Beast level three. Uh, level two. And he is doing exactly that. Good job. A little bit more micro. Bring these two talents around the factory. Uh, it's very tempting as Night Elf to control all talents, press the control group, and move them together. But it's not always necessary to move them all together. Box, rectangle, drag, click, spread. and movement. Love the streams and YouTube videos. Keep up the work. Definitely got better at heroes thanks to Yo Yo. <laughs> I guess that's me, Yo Yo. <laughs> Uh, box rectangle micro is very important in this fight. So let's see how he does it. He doesn't move them. In this case, he can move this talent up a bit and bring this talent through the cyclone. But he's, he's controlling them all. Of course, by now the situation changed. My blade has direct access to his talents. And at this point, because his units are hurt and mine are not, he needs to do a cyclone immediate TP value play. And keep in mind, if he had started an expansion, he would still have a chance. Look at the food. Right now, he's only five food ahead, uh, behind. Only five food behind. And just now, he was 20 food behind. So he's done really well. He's killed my priest, my berserker, and my grunts. It's enough for him. He needs to go back, heal up, use these moon oils. And I do believe he overstayed. And if he had been making an expansion, there would be a way out for him in this game. My TC is low and that's his win condition. But instead he ends up losing hella talents just because he wanted to go all in. And although all in should have been the premise for him, it should not have remained the premise. His priority should have shifted because the beginning of the fight went pretty well. Look at this situation. Let's say his tree of life just finished. He, he has 42 food, but let's say it could have been 48 if he didn't lose the talents. And his heroes are three and a half, three and one point seven, and I'm four and a half, two. Now this blade is a big issue, but the TC is not two. So as long as he can cycle on the blade as much as possible, it's pretty okay. And if he had an expansion up now, there's pressure on me. Furthermore, he is getting 100% income because he's not on upkeep, and I'm getting 140%. So although it's 40% more, it's not too crazy. As soon as he finishes his expansion, he will either be 200% or 140 like me. And so uh, it could lead to quite a good situation. Of course, I still had my expo a lot earlier, so I will still have gold bonus. But he can try to make use of his moon wells. Instead, because he doesn't have expo, he has to go all in again. And he did so probably in the best possible way, but at this point waiting for one raider is not worth it anymore because uh, I have such a big production train. I'm 67 now and this time I am prepared. It's gonna be easier. The fight location that he picked was still pretty good. He used my shop as a natural terrain blocker and a factory as another. He kept his heroes in front. But he did take two shockwaves. Some of his talents were too far forward. He tried to make a play for the demolisher. But it's better if there's one demo not to do an aggressive play to attack it. Instead keep kiting backwards. He drew himself way too far out of position. Leaving his talents exposed. <laughs> and he for, for go he forwent the natural body blocking location of this choke. And now he has fallen to uh, chaos and despair. And his troops are falling. GG. I could have t TLDR'd and say my expansion won the game. 